enough. I mean, when is he gonna use it? Oh, level three. And the Sun Flare will be used to... Okay, the Ains got one-shotted. The Fortress. I don't think the Eagles can finish it because one hit... Oh my... Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sunrise channel, my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a replay on the beautiful map Fiery in Deal in Battle for Middle Earth 2 on the patch 1.09 version 2.0. So we have the Red Elven player Siberia facing and fighting against the Green Mordor player Imperialist. So good against evil, Mordor versus Elves. Two slaughterhouse opening for the Mordor player into the Orc pit numero uno. On the other side we see two Malone trees opening for the Elven player Siberia and he might go for the barracks, he might go for the stable. And his choice is going to be a stable. So we're gonna have some lenses on the field against double orc pit opening. So, you know, the 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 age of elves is over. The time of the orc has come. Eventually. Eventually we don't know who's gonna dominate the Middle Earth. Uh, it's it feels like a second age time now, you know, in which we're gonna see elves versus orcs and um, there is a chance, I mean, unfortunately, there is no chance. We cannot see Galadriel against Sauron in this game because there is only one golem in one single rank and only one of the players can get the one rank. So that means in the best case scenario, we can actually only see either Galadriel or Sauron, but not both of them at the same time, which is kind of unfortunate. And please keep in mind that ring heroes in this game are way more powerful than they are in Rise of the Witch King. So Galadriel feels like Manvi. And Sauron feels like Melkor. They seem to be unbeatable, uh, uh, mythical uh, beings of Middle Earth, which can literally win you the game, you know, single handedly. Three slaughterhouses. And you can see the placement of the buildings is way different when we compare this game to Rise of the Witch King. The reason is simple because the buildings of this game are made of paper. They are very squishy buildings, and any swordman, including orcs, can take down a resource building like Malontri, for example, with only 1,040 HP in literally 3 seconds. That's why you will see them building it inside the fortress floors, because inside this area, the fortress is able to defend and shoot at nearby enemy units. Very important, the early game. And the punishment is much greater. So if you don't pay attention a few seconds, you know, to your buildings, you can legit lose almost everything what you possess in 5 seconds. Beautiful trample. All ground stands just in the last possible second, but it won't deny. The hard counter system makes it impossible for the orcs to ever fight against lancers, and one lancer should be easily able to take down multiple orc battalions by himself. The only thing you need to avoid is you don't want to trample into too many of them. When you do that, you will get slowed down, and then you cannot move away anymore, and they can surround you and deal massive damage to you. Okay, the third production building is going to be the Haradrim Palace, and the builder... The builders actually in this game are surprisingly tanky, but for that reason, the wall hubs, which you don't which you normally see in Rise of the Witch King, are surprisingly expensive. So you cannot simply build a wall hub trying to save your builder, you know? <laughs> you cannot afford it at the beginning of the game. I mean the orcs are doing their you know are doing what they are paid for. They are very cheap units in this game as well. I mean in BFM1 they cost nothing, here they cost 60, and in Rise of the Witch King they cost 80. So either they are for free or they are very cost efficient units. So it's not a big deal when you lose them as long as you can put pressure on them. And you kind of force the opponent player to defend with the lancers instead of putting pressure on you. Nice spot for the slaughterhouse, hiding. Um, that's one of the things I personally don't like about Give Me 2 and Rise of the Witch King. Maybe it's because I'm used to Give Me 1. I'm used to those bi uh, you know, building pilots in which people, every player can build on certain points, certain areas on the map which uh, avoids this search and find future you know, of the game in which you gotta look around the entire map to look for potential enemy buildings and that is that kind of causes that one game can last forever in which every, your, your opponent for example has lost everything but he's a builder and he keeps moving on and builds production buildings so in order to get victorious in this game you need to destroy every single production building of your opponent and if he doesn't want to get defeated, he can make you suffer, which can be quite annoying, you know? I mean, in tournament games, that's not going to happen, because people, when they realize, okay, they lost, they will surrender. But uh, in, a, in a casual game against a player who want to be annoying, he can be annoying, trust me on that one. I have Sauron has been used. Uh, I personally like to give me two graphics the most, you know, they are looking really nice, in my opinion. The animations, the graphics, the details. Like, it pretty much the patch 1.09 
already has like the HD edition in it. You know what I'm saying? So you can see the Oryx are looking fresh, like they're brand new from the market. You know, beautiful design for the lancers. Even textures on the map are looking pretty nice. Okay. Oh my, oh my goodness. Do you see the damage, dude? That's what I'm talking about. Easterlings, by the way, they are dealing crazy. I mean, every pikeman in the game are dealing crazy amount of damage to the production buildings. Production buildings are buildings like Barak, Stiebel, Uruk Pit, or buildings you can recruit units from. They are classified as production buildings, and they are very vulnerable against pikemen. Pikemen dealing like crazy increased damage to them. And you can see, even though it says like it has 3000 HP, it doesn't really matter anything. The HP in this game is meaningless. It's about the armor, a building, a unit, a hero has. That's even more important than the HP. Because you can have 1 HP, but you can have like 1000 armor. So in order to deal the 1 damage required to kill your unit or hero, your opponent will have to hit you eventually for 20 minutes. But Or you can have like 100,000 HP, but the enemy units can also have like 100,000% more damage against this building. And then it doesn't matter, because they will one-shot it anyway. Okay, I mean, um, Lorian Warriors are going ham. They will be able to destroy the slaughterhouse. We have 450 command points available for the Alvin player, 400 command points available for the Mordor player Imperialist. So his command points kept. He cannot recruit any more units at this point of the game. And he has five power points in the bank. The games are quite fast paced normally in both games, BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King, in which you barely can see a late game potential, but I'm always trying to find the one game in which we can eventually see more than only eight minutes in order to determine the faction's power, the strength of the faction in the lead game. Okay, six power points, beautiful. Very well done, you wanna avoid the pikemen. It's a much harder counter system in this game. So if you ever get touched by the pikemen when you are playing with cavalry heroes, mounted heroes or cavalry units, you will regret your life, you know? <laughs> it, it hurts. Like it literally gets you one-shotted. The punishment is great, so when you don't pay attention, you, you can lead pretty much all game long. But there is always like a comeback potential if you don't pay attention for a few seconds. So if your opponent is like 500 command points down and you mess up a little bit too much, one counter push from him with like two pikemen and two swordmen can be enough to take you down, literally. Because the buildings are so weak. Okay, 550 command points for Mordor and 550 command points for Elf. So you have not seen any hero yet on the field. But when it comes from Mordor, what I like about Mordor in this game, in compared to BFME 1 in Rise of the Witch King, is you can actually recruit the Nazgûls, you know, the Nazgûls on, on the foot and on the horse. They cannot be on Fell Beast, but they can be like mounted heroes, which gives you much more... This is what I'm talking about, exactly, perfect timing, Nazgûl. If they are quite squishy, but they are mounted, they can be used for harassment, they can also be used to give up the enemy units, you know, with the Dread Visage. And you can chase down the enemy cavalry all the time. But you want to avoid the pikemen. One pikeman can one-shot the Nazgul. One-shot them. Rallying Call has been used. Farset has been used. And the Elven player is now pushing for a, for an attack. You gotta avoid the Easterlings. It's very important. He has no pikemen around this location. That means the Nazgul can actually re-engage. Um, the counter system is pretty much like that. While the Nazgul on, on Horus is extremely vulnerable against pikemen, but he's also at the same time extremely tanky against Swartman, for example. Like a Swartman will never be able to deal damage to him, but a pikeman can one-shot him. So, like, rock, paper, scissors system, but next level, you know what I'm saying? The punishment is huge, but if you don't have the right units to deal with that, you barely deal any damage. So you need to build counter system. You have to recruit the units to counter the enemy units in order to dominate the fights. Otherwise, you won't deal any damage to him. Okay, so here's Barricade, a defensive structure summon, 550 command points. He was able to defend himself quite nicely and was getting away with only the Eye of Sauron, which is a high tier leadership hero. I mean, the leadership system all alone is a different topic for, him, for itself. It's very complex. And the first hero for the for the Alvin player is going to be Arvin. Oh, Arvin, you want, you want to be careful. Barricade in the middle of the map, I like the placement a lot, as long as you can protect that. Barricade is also surprisingly tanky um, against anything but Pikeman, for example. And it can also shoot multiple arrows at the same time. You see the arches on top of the barricade, so every one of them is shooting, which can make the building, in compared to a single tower, for example, way more valuable. Okay? This is gonna draw attention. Like, the thing is, even if you lose this eventually, which you might, because in the it's not anywhere close to your fortress, you might lose that. 
but the amount of time and resources your opponent has to invest to take you down will give you the time of your life. You can expand, you can keep protected what you have already on the field, and you can become stronger and stronger and stronger while your opponent is still busy trying to destroy this body kit, which he has to because it's literally in the center of the map. 700 command points for Mordor and 600 for Elves. Arvin is gonna level up like crazy. The heroes, every single hero in this game is able to level up from level 1 all the way to level 4 in literally no time. So, basically, if Arvin gets the last one on the slaughterhouse, watch this. Oh, but if she gets touched, oh! Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm telling you, hard counter system. Oh, Tom Bombadilo is here. Boom, sun on your face. Let's go. Let's go, Tommy. Tom Riddle. <laughs> no, it's the wrong game, or it's the wrong film, book, or whatever you want to call it. 600 command points. Maybe Tom Bombadil is actually Tom Riddle. Escaped from the Harry Potter world to the Lord of the Rings world, and then he was so strong as a wizard could resist the one no he couldn't let's be real lord Voldemort would actually try his best to dethrone sauron and possess the one ring for himself i did this on the field level one only need some more time to get levels and imperialist is actually getting stronger and stronger but still only tier one units so far not even haradrim palace level two yet for the haradrim arches and also of course in compared to the expansion which is the rise of the witch king you have also way less units available for example you are missing here um See it. You are missing here the Haradrim lenses, for example. You cannot recruit the Haradrim lenses, that's not possible. So, Mordor, here, just like in BFMU1, isn't able to recruit any cavalry units. I mean, you are able to recruit cavalry heroes from your fortress, but that's pretty much it. Okay? You can see the commitment, you see how tanky this building is. Hydir might be in trouble. There is a level 4, almost level 5 Nazgul. Arvin is back on the menu, looking for a chance to show her quality for Aragorn. Uh, where is Hydra at? Did Hydra die? No, he was able to get away. He needs to be level 4 for leadership, damage leadership. And Arvin offers you armor leadership, but only for the cavalry. So she's pretty much like uh, Eoma from the Men of the West faction, only offers for a specific type of a unit, leadership. Two Nazguls to rule them all. Very tanky against arrows, as you can see. They don't take too much damage. Because Hydra doesn't have leadership yet. Power point wise, we have 9 power points in the bank after the Tom Bomber deal for the Albion player Siberia. He's up to 750 command points in total, and we have 700 command points available for Imperialis. He has collected 8 power points after the body kit, which by the way is still remaining on the field. And it's gonna slowly but surely start rebuilding itself very soon, and it's gonna heal up. I mean, it's gonna take a while, so the Albion player has still time to take it down before it's fully regenerated. Okay. Uh, but maybe we might need some stronger heroes. He has also the House of Healing around the fortress. You can see this, uh, you know, the glow, the blue get glow around the fortress. That means you don't have to build the Mirror of Galadriel for the sustain. You can just, you know, send the units around your fortress and heal up. Tower is here, shooting down Arvin all the time. Arvin actually taking a lot of damage from the tower. She's a very squishy hero at the end of the day, right? So she has, she's pretty much like a Nazgul. Very squishy. But quite mobile and very cost efficient. Be careful against the Easterlings. I don't want to have a deja vu situation here. Nine power points in the bank. And body kit can be used once again. And that's the good thing about body kit. People underestimate that kind of abilities. You know, you can use them over and over again. And if your opponent never can take them down, you can actually have a full map with the body kit from left to right. They don't have an expiring time. This thing is forever until it's getting destroyed. So it's not like a special summon of, of units in which you have them for a limited amount of time, you know? Oh, oh careful Arvin right now right for ruin in the Arvin's ending <laughs> dude Arvin oof that, that's painful and you want to place Hydra next to the arch is very important we have also Legolas on the field by the way a hero we see way more often in, in BFME 2 than in BFME 1 and also in the rise of the witch king in almost every single game I get to see Legolas because he costs you only 2000 here which is affordable and also you get my much faster money from these buildings the body kit oh we have the arrow volley killing mainly orcs the nazgus are coming approaching and for whatever reason the elven player siberia is refusing to recruit pikemen oh the nazgus just wiped out the elven archer army dude it's really bad and you see the pl placement very smart placement so here's a 
fighting situation around this side, which might actually force the Elven player to get a int expansion, you know, to throw to throw rocks against this building. In the second he is able to deal with that, Mordor is another outpost. So he can just build back a little bit and then defend this area. Which, but, but, I'm, like, you are trying to create like a like a zone. Like you want to zone your opponent in, into an area in which he has to defend. Because look at the positioning. You have to react to that. You cannot just let the army be here and move out, you know? Because the couple of pikemen and archers, they can actually take down your buildings in a few seconds. Oh, he's going for the tavern now. For the Corsairs. And he's building two of them, so he gets like 10% discount. The Corsairs are going to become 10% cheaper. The Nazgûl's one of them level 4, one of them is almost level 6. And he's also, you know, building towers to protect the side lanes. Very important. And this is the vision control from the model player. He's able to see a lot. Very, very uh, important placement of the buildings. And the towers, even though they are not immortals, they are not, like, it's not like they are indestruct indestructible or something, but it's going to eventually still buy you enough time. Rallying Cole has been used defensively. Archers are dealing no damage to buildings, basically. So you need your lances to deal the damage. But you can see, even with the lances, the building is surprisingly tanky. Arvin! Okay, level 4, very good. Uh, needs to be level 6, uh, 5, sorry. And you can see, even abilities are able to stay skilled with level the worm! Hold on! Boom! Burn! Hot, 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 hot. <laughs> the burn animation is looking crazy! Do it, Worm. Do it, do it, do it. Oh, look at this Alvin warriors burning like Denethor did in the films. Arvin is committing. She has the flood. But will she get the chance to use it? She's very low. The Worm, you cannot reposition the Worm here, by the way, in this game. And like you can in Rise of the Witch King, he will do that automatically himself. So you just summon the Worm and you can just chill and never watch him again. He will do his own thing. He knows what to do. Will he burn this? And the, the Worm here in this game can one-shot... Mounted heroes. And we have a tree beard up on the field, boys. The the protector of the Fangon Forest. And I don't know about that tree beard. I don't want I don't know if you should engage on a worm who is literally breathing fire on your face. And your biggest weakness is like fire, you know? Uh oh. Oh, he knocked down a Haldi. That was the last mission from Worm. But he has already done a good job. The build has been taken down. The Nazgûls, they keep pressuring all the time. We have 1,000 command points available for the Mordor player. That's the maximum. You can't have more than that. And the Elven player is dropping down to 850, but he's going to drop even farther down after losing those Malon trees, which have, like, not... Oh, nice. Oh, holy quackamole. Nice burst damage, by the way. And the flat. I mean, it already says the flat horses are in, uh, bonus damage against Black Riders. Oh, the Wombo combo, dude. Flat, wash him away, knock him down, and then Hulk strike on his face. They got us finished him off. Nice. So they have Tom Bombadil available for the next big fight. Arrow Wally is available. Arrow Wally has like no cast down in this game. So the second you cast it, it's gonna drop down arrows multiple times. So multiple waves of arrows, but it's not that powerful in compared to Rise of the Witch King. And also leaves no fire on the ground. So it deals way less damage with no damage over time effect. But it's it's not dodgeable. So <laughs> unless you are cavalry, you cannot dodge this. I mean, does he have Forge Blades, really? Where did he buy it from? Ah, from the same building. So he bought, actually, Forge Blades for the Corsairs. They cost 360 each, normally they cost 400. But again, you get 10% discount. Um, the thing is, Lego the build has been taken down. Legolas can keep shooting all the time. So Legolas hide here next to each other, very smart move. This way they can even share experience. With the Eagles coming, they are chasing down the Nazgûls. The Nazgûl, the one Nazgûl which was remaining, has been taken down. He has even uh, the upgrade. On the on the barricade because of the upgrade on the fortress you see these flames around the fortress they are pretty much meaning that you can every tower you build or every expansion around the fortress will actually have the fire arrows which can be quite nice against something like ants and they are very vulnerable against fire maybe we can see a witch king later on yeah, because mordor is dropping down actually to 300 out of 975 command points so he has a lot of command points available Yes, but he's not having enough units on the field. That's the problem. And the Eagles, they can definitely deal great amount of damage here and drop him down to 875 command points, maybe even more than that. But the, the, the buildings you want to really kill is this level 2 slaughterhouse and this level 3 slaughterhouse. It's very important because the level 3 here in this game 
will give you 175 command points so it's a lot it's one building almost gives you the same command points like four level one resource buildings so they are so valuable and that's why you should when you play in a one-on-one -on -one match try your best to take down your level three the opening level three resource buildings very important 15 power points almost after the worm so we might and we will eventually get the chance to see a 25 power point in this game and We heard Treebeard crying. Treebeard has been taken down. Arvin has the flood almost back up. Uh, Plat is not very powerful against buildings. Um, it's, you know, it's okay, but it's not very strong, you know? Oh, sorry. I was <laughs> hitting my knee against the table. Okay, uh, Haldir is level 5. Level 10 unlocks the Golden Arrow. Stuns light sen sensitive enemy units. Effective against cavalry and weak heroes. A high damage attack that causes meta impact. A little bit different in compared to Rise of the Witch King because in Rise of the Witch King, first of all, it is available with level 8. But again, uh, keep in mind that here in this game, heroes are able to level up way faster. 11 power points after the Eagles and we have 18 power points after the Worm. So the motor play is definitely closer. The reason for that is obviously that he didn't pick anything like Farsight, Tom Bombadil, Arrow Volley. These two are 10 power points, so the motor play went straight up to the 15. So 5 power point, 10 power point, 15 power point. If you do that, it's rewarding in long terms because then you will most likely be the first one who's gonna unlock the 25 power point. And 25 power point, the Baldrock, a Rain of Fire, for example, for the Mordor faction or Flood or Sunflare for the Alvin faction can be, when you get it first, be game changing, you know what I'm saying? A Flood, for example, just on the spot here, you can deal damage. Look, look at this situation. You deal, you crash a Tavern, you crash a level three, rather than palace and also orc at the same time this can be extremely effective oh easter links coming legolas trying to defend he should be able to defend there's no problem the easter links they are kind of tanky though and uh, like it needs like two three shots to kill them the nazgul but we need more than a nazgul to be honest with you we need more than that he's losing lancers to this squad Okay, okay, oh, the ends, so he was using, the ends are very vulnerable against pikemen though, but they got kind of a little bit scared, so the pikes, they should be able to one-shot them, three ends you summon here by the way, but you can see the, the, the damage is not that great, I mean, it's okay, I'm not gonna say it's a bad thing, but I'm not happy with the 15 power point, now it's gonna delay you even more, he went for the L, for the ends, right? And now he's, at this point of the game, he's 21 power point away from his 25. Which is very, <laughs> which is a lot. So let's be real here. And the model play is up to 24 power points. Like, I'm telling you one thing, guys. If you play a game, a BFME game, if it's BFME 1, Rise of the Witch King or BFME 2, it doesn't really matter. You need to have a strategy in your mind. And you need to think one step ahead. You understand? You need to, you need to ask yourself, when I'm doing this, what can I get from it? And what do I lose from it? But most people are always thinking about a short thing. Oh, the rain of fire. Actually, he had to use it there. That's a 25 power. Okay, I take it back, actually. <laughs> it's not a bad thing now. Because he forced his opponent to use the 25 kind of defensively, which he had to because he was about to lose Fortress. But what I'm trying to say is, like, people are always thinking about a short-term uh, thing. It's like a gamble situation in, you need to, in which you need to ask yourself, should I go for it? Or is it better to save the power points and go for the 25? I still believe 25 would have been a better choice. But as the opponent was kind of forced to use the 25 to defend against the ends, it's okay. But he didn't know that, you know, that's my point. <laughs> he didn't know that the opponent has to use 25. Because if he could have taken down the ends without the Reign of Fire, Reign of Fire on this spot, for example, would have been epic. You use it here, you chunk the fortress, you kill the level 3 Malon 3 steeple in the barracks. Would be great amount of damage. But hey, the game isn't over yet. It is not over until it's over. Mordor is reclaiming map control, that's good. Um, 600, 600 command points available for Siberia, the Elven player. 8 power points after the Eagles and Ends. And we have 3 power points after the Reign of Fire for Mordor player Imperialist. And he's still up to 1000 command points. So he is having a great amount of eco. And elves, they will struggle, because the worm now can actually deal great amount of damage even to this level 3 Malon 3. 
The mana on trees are very vulnerable against fire. Obviously, it's a tree, and you can see it's almost getting one-shotted. No? Yeah. It's minus 175 command points, by the way. You see? Like, that's what I'm talking about. One single push. But it's the worm head. The worm is literally in the fortress, boys. Do you see this? I've never seen this before. <laughs> He's gonna knock. I wanna see the damage. Is he gonna able attack Legolas? No, the worm is not reacting. Fast enough. Oh, he's chilling now. It's like he's looking like a goofy, you know what I'm saying? With the weird looking eyes and stuff. Looks like a goofball. 1000 command points. But for whatever reason, he seems to be poor all the time, right? Because even though he has like a lot of command points, he didn't go for the industry. And he seems to be broke every single time. I mean, he's buying a lot of upgrades on the units. Forge blades on them. How much does it cost actually? Does he have also heavy armor? No. When you give them forge blades, you need to invest 250. Oh, it's actually a lot. So they have all of them have it, right? So one, two, three, four units. Four units have it. So that's a thousand. You need to invest on top of the recruiting price. You need to you need to, you know, invest at the beginning anyway. Oh, she got poisoned. You want him? Come and claim him. Not a limb. Osfolo or something, I don't know. I don't remember anymore. <laughs> I don't remember this team anymore because I was skipping them. In, in the last times I was watching Lord of the Rings, I was skipping the scene with Arvin. Nothing against Arvin, but I think it's kind of pointless, you know? Okay. I mean... It's, it's bad, actually, you know? It's really bad because he keeps losing stuff all the time. Barricade has been used once again. It should be defending itself. The fire arrows are hitting very hard. The pikemen, they gotta go get there. The, the eagles will... There is an eagle from the... Okay, that's an eagle from the fortress. That's what it is. But it's a level 10 eagle. You cannot get levels on him. And you have also no abilities on him in this game. But it's able to knock down the enemy units all the time. Doesn't deal too much damage to them. But as you can see, the Nazgul can pretty much not move at all. Like, obviously, you cannot do that to every single hero. Many heroes in this game, like high-tier heroes, like, for example, Gandalf, Aragorn, Elrond, and stuff like that, they have, like, a knockback resistant. So they can be resisting the knockdown, knockback, but the Nazgul can't. It's a tier 1 hero, very weak, and that's why the eagle can constantly knock him down, and he will never be able to move away. But still, you know, even after killing the Nazgul, even after defending this, uh, the Alvin player is down to 475 command points only. His eco is looking very bad. And even with the 25, the, 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 the way you want to use a 25 power point is you don't want to use it randomly and that's it. You know what I'm saying? You want to coordinate that with a big push. So you want to have an army ready to fight. And then you use it and then you commit and try to deal even more damage. Look, with the 25, even if he gets there very soon, he will be able to damage even the fortress a lot. The fortress has already taken a lot of damage. So you combine this with your eagle from your fortress, with the two eagles from your summon, and with a lot of units, including your heroes like Arvin, Hygir, and Legolas. And then you try to finish off the enemy fortress. That should be your goal. Because losing a fortress would mean at this point that Mordor wouldn't be able to use any power points anymore. Which is a huge feel, uh, deal, because in, in late game, the power points, they are, they are your biggest win condition. So you having no access to them anymore is a huge handicap. The Knife Fighter. Level 8, by the way, level 10 unlocks the Arrow Wind. Which makes Legolas shoot with, like, machine guns. I'll be destroying the sword. Heroes are doing a good job. No pikemen, no problem. Arwen can keep doing what she's doing. The Mordor player is trying to ignore them, but it's hard to ignore them when there is an eagle knocking you down on the ground all the time. 21 power points. Mordor is up to 8. Rain of Fire is slowly but surely reloading, and the Mordor has upgrade now on the fortress. You see the green thing around the fortress, that means the armor is enabled, so it's gonna be way more tanky. And also when you get this, um, I think it's called Minas Morgul upgrade or something, you can also unlock the Gorgoroth Spire Fireball. For, you need to invest money, of course. And then you can shoot like a gigantic, ginormous, you know, ball of fire into wipe out. It's like rain of fire, pretty much. A little bit smaller than that, but it's very efficient. 
8 power points, you gotta be fast, dude. Like, you gotta be fast. I mean, obviously, the end summon has a lower cooldown in compared to the Reign of Fire. So, I think the Elven player can win this if he can coordinate something with the Eagles and ends and the 25 power point at the same time. The ends are dealing crazy amount of damage to the fortress, right? Very important to understand that. So, what you want to do is you want to use your 25 to kill the expansions so it, it can't shoot anymore. I, ideally, you want to kill the level 3 here or level 3 here. Very important too. And then, you commit with your eagles. You have three eagles in total. One of them is already on the field, level 10, and the other two from the summon. In your ends, you commit fully on the fortress. Fully. Very important. And you need to pray that it's going to be enough to finish off the fortress. Because every minute passing through will favor the Mordor player. He will have Rain of Fire available very soon. And if you wait with the ends, you can just use the Rain of Fire to kill your ends. You can use Rain of Fire to kill your buildings. And because he has a lot more command points than you do, he will be eventually having more sustain in the eco too. Level 2 Slaraos here, Tower here, Level 3 here, Level 3 here. Holy Quackamole. Radran Palace coming up. This is a very juicy area to use flat on. I'm not being I'm being dead, dead honest with you. Like flat here, holy moly. Okay, so the Alvin player has ends. Check. Eagles, check. Arrow Volley, check. Tom Bombadil, check. And has 23 power points in the bank. So force a fight and try to get to the 25 ASCP. Because Reno Fire is reloading. Don't waste. Don't waste your eagle like that or your time like that trying to kill Volaps. Okay, big commitment. Okay, he's going ham, boys. Oh, smart worm. Very smart worm, dude. Perfect. One shooting the ends, by the way. One shooting them. Look at that. Smart. I didn't even see that coming, to be honest with you. Oh, that's desperate. He has the flat now, but it's not going to be enough. I mean, where is he going to use it? Oh, level 3. Holy guacamole. The flat. What is the range of the flat, my man? I mean, the Eagles won't deal damage anymore to this thing. They are, the, this thing is too tanky. You know, you need ants. The, oh, there was a desperate attempt. But I, the Worm is the MVP here, by the way. The Worm just, like, literally won the game for Mordor. The Worm one-shotted all the ants. Three, three ants are got, gotten killed in, like, two seconds. Literally. Holy crap. What? That's a crazy game, dude. And I, I see in the comment section of the videos most of the time, Hey, Shanks, why are you covering only with me games? Give me one, you know? And that's true. I've been actually covering almost exclusively Battle for Middle Earth on my channel recently. And I want to switch the things up a little bit in the future. I want to actually cover... I mean, the intention of me creating my channel was always to cover all BFME games and mods. Like, everything. You know, BFME 1, 2, and Rise of the Witch King. But then I got uh, dived a little bit too deep into the BFME 1. And the thing is, I've, I'm actually covering more BFME 2 and Rise of the Witch King on my Twitch channel. So I wanted to actually have, like, a separate place for BFME 1 exclusively on my, on my, on my YouTube channel. And... Uh, I have a second YouTube channel as well, guys. So if you haven't already, you should be checking it out. It's called Beef Me World, which is very good for the people who are not able to make it to my streams. So every Beef Me stream, tournament, and anything else, but pretty much, which you can't watch live on my channel, will be in long terms uploaded to my uh, second YouTube channel, Beef Me World. You can also find the description of that in the comment section down below. As the Alvin player is dropping down to 64 out of 775 available command points. He has lost everything. The last hope has been just blown up blown up literally with the rain of fire. And the fortress is rebuilding itself slowly but surely over time. The Eagle is back on the menu. They're gonna fight until the very end. And I cannot believe it. They have not seen... A... I'm actually kind of speechless though. Because the Mordor player, despite the fact that he has 1000 command points available, right? I mean... Like, he has 1,000 command points in a very long time. How comes that he is so poor? I don't understand. Like, he has multiple level 3 slaughterhouses. He even lost two of them here. Like, how much money does he get from one of them? I'm, actually, I'm curious. Let me check. At 27. Yeah, but, I mean, he needs to be rich. For whatever reason, he seems to be extremely poor. Normally, at this stage of the game, when Mordor is that rich, 
we will eventually be able to see Mumakirs, Witch King, Fjall Beast, Mouth of Sauron, Haradrim Archers, but we have not seen any of them in this game, and I think this game is already more than 30 minutes long, if I'm not mistaken. So kinda crazy. He's going now for the, for the three beards. Look at this. What is this? Evacuate. Ah, you can mount him on hob hobbits or something? Really? I didn't know that. Kind of crazy. Yes, leadership too for the nearby ends. More armor, more speed, more range, more experience. And it's a it's a unique leadership. Modifier type three beard leadership, you know? So only three beard is able to make the ends a bit stronger. Okay, let's see the damage from three beard. No, not that high. I think he needs to shoot it like... You see, that's one of the things I don't understand. Like a siege weapon like Tribute is, for example. He's literally made that's only his purpose to deal damage to buildings. Most of the time. Like, you can trample units down as well, but... His main... Main reason of existence in the Alvin faction is... To, become, to be a siege weapon. <laughs> but his siege is not that strong. Then you see an Orc Warrior... Killing this thing way faster than Tribute can. That's kind of feeling a little bit too weird for me. Maybe the, I have a problem in my mindset. I have seen lots of BFME 1. I've played BFME 1 myself. And I've also seen a lot of Rise of the Witch King. Not that much BFME 2 yet. I've been hosting tournaments for BFME 2 as well, but ne not nearly as much as I did for Rise of the Witch King. And maybe I'm comparing the games a little bit too much with each other. But for me, that doesn't feel reasonable. Objectively not. I mean, for a dude who is having a very rough time attacking, who has like one hour delay between his attacks, he doesn't seem to hit very hard. Arvin, I mean, I like the fact that they're fighting until the very end though. Like, it's a back and forth game. The Alvin player had definitely a chance to win the game, I think. Um, but then he messed up, but a couple of mistakes can definitely, and they did definitely change the outcome of the game. 1000 command points and 875 command points for Siberia. And he's up to 14 power points after the flood. And the Mordor player is up to 2 power points after the. Oh, he finally picked up the industry. Okay, so he is using it on this one, level 1, and gets 36 out of that. But why only le on the level 1? Why not on the level 3? Because it boosts your money to 300%. So whatever you get, it makes times 3. So for example, here you get 36. So normally you get like 12 in this case. But here, when you check here, like mathematically, I, I, you get 27. So when you use it on this one, it will be 27 times 3. What is that? 54, 61, 81. So you choose this one instead of having 81 per tick. Quick math, by the way, in the middle of the night. Okay. Uh, tree beard, unprotected a little bit, taking way too much damage for no reason. Gorgoroth's Spire Fireball is not available. And Mordor is kind of, once again, I, I cannot tell you guys why this Mordor is so, uh, so poor. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. But he seems to have lots of money problems. And the Alvin player, even though he's like down so much. The Flood, oh, nice. Arwing, good job. Killed the Nazgul, very good. The level 2, level 3 slaughterhouse is going to be taken down by the Tree Beard. Last shot. The body kit right after. I think in order to siege a little bit faster and better, you need more than only one tree. You need to recruit more, more ants. They are also very expensive though, because 800 each. 800. The problem is... Exactly, yeah. I, I thought, I just wanted, wanted to say that. The worm is going to be available once again and look three bit now. Oh, he missed him? Or did he hit him and he's not going to take that much damage because he's a hero? Oh, he just knocked down his own units. Doesn't need too much damage. Oh, my arrow wally. Pew, pew, pew on your face. Oh, he can't. He made him cancel it. He knocked him down. Okay, I want to see this. The worm is actually crazy in this game. Look, not only it has way less cooldown than the ends, but I think the worm is so, imp so strong. Tanky and very strong. Um... It can one shot. I mean, we, I've seen games in BFME 2 in which the, the, the Worm was able to one shot mounted heroes. Like, he was one shotting Arvin from 100 to 0. And he's tanky too, he's beefy too, right? But 
I mean, Treebeard was able to survive. Keep in mind that Treebeard offers leadership to the ants, so he will get the chance to get one more ant on the field now. So with that, we have two ants, and then he can summon even three more ants very soon from the Ant Ally special summon of the Spellbook of the Albion faction. So he will have five ants and three beards, one of them, is gonna make them even stronger. They will have more armor, more range, and more movement speed. The more range part is very important, because then you can shoot the fortress literally from this location. You know, you can shoot from a far distance. And the worm being on cooldown, I don't know how the model player is planning to kill him. He has no Gorgoroth's Fireball as well. I think at this point of the game, the Alvin player has to be fast. But it's hard to be fast for a fat end like this. This guy had like a really rough pandemic time. Dude, uh, get out and make some sport, man. S stop chilling in the end mood. I mean, I'm literally criticizing him, but I, I gotta do the same, dude. I'm also getting fat, boys. <laughs> really hard. Like, I'm, I'm spending so much time home. <laughs> I, should have, I should go a little bit more out, I think. Um, the eagle was barely able to get away. Almost 12 power points for Mordor, and he has even Sunflare. Okay, but the fortress is back to full HP. And once again, with the armor upgrade of the Morgul, up, Mor you know, Minas Morgul upgrade on the fortress, I think it becomes like 75% more tank. It's like a crazy amount of increase of your durability of your, of your fortress. It's a huge fill. Thank you. Land has been used. Arrow Volley is coming in clutch. Um, the ants, they need some protection though. I mean, you cannot just let them there, you know, for no reason. He has ants also from the summon. He has Tom Bombadil. He could use Tom Bombadil to, to defend this. The eagles are coming from the summon. The eagle, the level 10 eagle has been taken down. They are trying to kill the Nazgul. Looking for an engagement, but there are Easterlings on the field. But Flat is available. Oh, they are running into the Easterlings. Arvin has to be careful. Arvin li will literally get one-shotted. They are trying to kill one of the Nazguls. Yes, one of the Nazgul has been taken down. Arvin... If she gets touched a couple of times, she will die. The ants will be summoned on the top. And the sun flare will be used to kill the enemy unit. But why would you do that? If you already invested so much money to try to kill them. I think you should have just used sun flare from the beginning. And you didn't need to invest that many resources. Where are the ants? The ants are far away. They should be moving definitely to this location. The siege has begun. But you see the fire arrow coming from this body kit. And burning one of the ants. Just move a little bit for forward. You are taking damage which you don't have to take. And moving like two steps forward would have been denying that. But he doesn't. And one of the ants is going to be burned. Without dealing too much damage. Once again the fortress is tanky. There is another one coming to fat end. But three beard has to support them. They are all burning besides one of them was able to survive. You have still three beard. This fat end and this skinny end. They can they be enough to finish off the game? They should... Focus down the fortress. Mordor is kind of poor, but he will have his Reign of Fire available very soon. That's a different topic for itself. I have no clue, and maybe you guys know why. Maybe, of course, maybe you have like definitely more experience than I do have in BFM2. Maybe you can let me know in the comment section down below why is this Mordor so poor? It's like multiple level 3 slaughterhouses with lumber mills, industry. How is he so poor? Oh, we have. Level 10, I think we have seen Cloudbreak too, right? Was, was it Cloudbreak? Yeah, we stunned them all. The fortress, I don't know why he's just not trying to finish off the fortress. Doesn't make any sense to me. Phew, okay, Hawk Strike. I, I think he could have gotten the chance to finish off the fortress. Like, each of them attack at one time. Can this be enough? One more hit. No way. There is no way that this is happening. Hey, guess what? But he has Flat almost back up. The Flat can finish it. The Eagle is coming in clutch. The Eagle will be able to finish it. And you know how huge this is? I mean, despite the fact that Mordor is out of the game, he has no money to rebuild this anytime soon. But he cannot even use his power points anymore. And he was all about to reload the Rain of Fire, which could give him the chance of a counter commitment. And the Rain of Fire here. I mean, he used Rain of Fire twice already, but both of the uses was actually against the enemy units to defend himself. And I don't know, this Mordor feels so poor. Does he have any builders though? Like, he, he doesn't seem to get money for whatever reason. I have no clue why not. He has still a one, almost, yeah, he has 1000 command points still. And yet he is feeling so incredibly poor all game long. Does he have like a handicap or something? I have no clue. I have literally no clue. The Eagle are, is taking so much damage from the, from the body kit. Uh, will be taken down. 
but without the he has a builder he's building a troll cage so when he gets the chance to save up to 5000 he will get the chance to rebuild his fortress and that would be one of the greatest comebacks of all time if he can still win this game which is let's be honest gonna be incredibly difficult nearly too impossible because uh, the power points it's too late like losing fortress now is like giving your opponent in Yu-Gi-Oh the Exodia deck and he has like four cards or four cards out of five needed cards in his hands and the next card he's gonna draw is the last card and it's gonna be the last piece of Exodia which is gonna win him the duel and I think we are finding ourselves in a very similar situation in this game holy moly man actually this game turned to be a crazy fiesta <laughs> but I mean I'm still speechless and I still don't understand not do I nor do I know how this Mordor can be so poor Upgrading those Corsairs maybe is not beneficial because 250 each doesn't seem to be reasonable. I don't see a big differential between them being upgraded and not. And that's one of the few things which are quite annoying for me personally about Bifimi and Rise of the Witch King. I feel like upgrades are not really needed and when you finally get them you don't feel the differential of getting way stronger. But the amount of time and money you need to invest to get, them up, uh, to get the upgrades first of all and to purchase them and to upgrade your units with them is doesn't seem to be worth it that's why in countless amount of games or are ending without without any player buying any upgrades you know what i'm saying i think we see upgrades one out of 100 games pretty much troll versus hyrir the elf the elf or the troll but you see no knockback resistant i think troll is going to be literally able to one v one him because he can't move like troll doesn't deal too much damage to him but he can legit not move that's the problem <laughs> you see <laughs> like he's in a very very bad spot behind him a level 3 slaughterhouse bullying him oh he's gonna run away he's like you know he's like fancy fancy footwork oh why are you not moving Haldir? okay uh remember Oh, he's building the Haradrim Palace Tavern here. He doesn't want to give up, boys. He want to fight until the very end. He has a level 1 Troll Cage. But in order to get the tro Troll Cage level... Uh, the Drummond Troll, you need Troll Cage level 2. And Attack Trolls level 3. So... Hydra has been finally taken down. It took the Troll only a few minutes to do that. Uh, the Flood has been used. I missed the Flood, though. I don't know where he missed... Where he used that, my bad. And Mordor is up to almost 4k in the bank. Troll... Dancing around the rules with the lenses, make sure Legolas gonna be able to finish him. Shoot him, Legolas, shoot him! Oh oh, guys, if um if Mordor can win this, that would be literally one of the Hall of Fames, and we need to kind of uh, put like a new rule to the channel, and we need to kind of make like a Hall of Fame video section, you know, in which a game when it's incredibly close, when it's incredibly back and forth, with lots of comebacks and stuff, we can classify them as like a Hall of Fame. And then we can make like a playlist in the, in the YouTube channel and, you know, make a follow Hall of Fame with me one, with me two and Rise of the Witch King. And then many, many years later, maybe even 10 years from now, when you feel like you, oh, with me, I missed this game, you can still find the playlist and rewatch those games. What do you think about that? And if, what do you think about the idea? It's a question to you. And would you help me to decide if, it, if it's going to be Hall of Fame or not? You need to let me know in the comment section down below, of course. Not talking about this game specifically, but generally, generally, you know? But Mordor has 5k in the bank, boys. Mordor has the enough, has necessary resources to once again rebuild his fortress. And he just invested the money. He's sending the builder to some location, and that's going to be the location here. Oh, that's gonna be kind of like it takes some time to rebuild a fortress you can see the percentage is going up like very slowly i think it maybe like one minute full maybe even one minute and 30 seconds 90, 90 seconds to rebuild it but you see the power points from the model player yes while your fortress is destroyed you cannot use your power points but it doesn't mean that you can't gain power points you still gain power points from fighting if he gets the fortress up on the field he will have 24 power points in the bank so he needs one more power point for the next 25, which will be the Balrog, right? So you have Balrog and Reign of Fire was almost available. I think the combination of Balrog and Reign of Fire can literally be enough to finish the fortress and every building around it. 
The thing is that Sunflare is still on cooldown. If the Sunflare is available or flat, what you can do is you can use flat against Badrock or Sunflare against Badrock and nearly one-shot him. Because most of the 25 power points can actually counter each other, right? But it's not going to be available anytime soon. The Elven player has no information, he has no vision around this area. That's the vision of control of the Elven player Siberia. He's able to see the tavern, yes, and the units, yes, but he doesn't see the fortress. He doesn't know that the Mordor player is actually rebuilding the fortress. He's gonna have eagles very soon, he's gonna have ants very soon. I think that's what he's counting on. But the question is, can the ants be ready before the fortress? And if yes, will he use them in the right place? Okay, he sees the fortress now. That should be like an alarm signal, like drr, 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 alert, alert, alert. He's gonna use them. But the eagles, I don't think they're gonna be a good choice here. The, 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 the body kit is gonna be, hold on. Even Legolas is putting on the knife. Ants. Mordor has 27 power points. The fortress has taken so much damage already. He has power points. He's gonna use Rain of Fire on the ants. Okay, the ants got one-shotted. The fortress, I don't think the eagles can finish it because one of the eagles already down. And the other one is gonna be taken down as well before being able to finish it. And he went for Barrage. Barrage, where he's using it. On the fortress. Killing all the expansions around the fortress. Almost beside one tower. But it doesn't deal too much damage to the fortress itself. Uh, he couldn't go for the Balrog, I think. Now it's very low. And Sunflare is almost available. Dude, what a crazy game, man. <laughs> I don't know. Like a back and forth game. Like, what is this game, man? That's crazy, my dude. I don't know, man. <laughs> I feel like the Elven player is still the edge. You know, he has like still a huge advantage. Let's be real here. The Fortress is way healthier than this one. He has a 25 power point backup, the Sun Flare, which can be... I mean, it's not very effective against buildings. Um, You see? Cancels Darkness and Freezing Rain. Effective against weak heroes. And burn enemies and allies. I don't know if it's effective against buildings. I don't think it will be enough to one-shot the Fortress from this HP. Mordor has still 1,000 command. Can you imagine that? That's kind of crazy. Like, after all this time, he, this guy is sitting on 1,000 command points like a boss. Mini, mini level 3 slaughterhouses, actually. Yes, the arrow volley. Oh, the sound player will be used. But as I was expecting it, he killed the expansions, though. Rallying call. Arrow volley can be used, actually, on the spot. The flood from Arvin. Arrow volley is coming. Can it hit? Oh, my God. It one-shotted the lenses. I mean, rallying call doesn't really mean anything because <clears throat> it doesn't give you armor, but still, it one-shotted them in a second. And the fortress, as well as the Mordor player imperialists, are still in the game. Topic. <laughs> we see also arrow volley from the album player on the pikemen. Haradrim arches. They get oh, he killed the full battalion. What the heck? Oh, the eagle? Wanna play the hero? He needs to attack two more times. He cannot do it. Really? Can he? He needs to attack one more time! One more time! One more time! <laughs> There's no way, dude. There is literally no way. I mean, the problem is Mordor player has not many units on the field. But the Elven player has no end mood. Yes, the fortress is low, but I don't think he has enough units to finish it off. Now, all the expansions are built up once again. And the fortress will start rebuilding itself very soon and regenerate once again eventually back to full HP. Now the thing is that the 22 power points in the bank from the album player they don't really mean as much as the 19 power point from the Mordor player. Because Mordor player didn't get the chance to unlock his second, you know, 25 power point yet. There's a white fighting against Legolas with lifesteal. It's very, very tricky situation, boys. It's a very tricky situation, actually. He has the worm, which he can save, you know, to deal with the ants later on. Even though ants have still a long cooldown. The the, the flat is going to be the first one who's going to be... The first ability which is going to be up way, way sooner than Sunflare and way sooner than the Rain of Fire. And the flat, unlike the, Rain of, uh, unlike the Sunflare, can also deal great amount of damage to the buildings. So you can eventually finish off this area and look at this layout. 
So you use floods here, you deal damage to this, 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 this. Like literally everything can be washed away. But I think the Elven player Siberia is too much tunnel vision focus on this spot. He's just letting uh, the model player get free money. Multiple level 3 untouched slaughterhouses. Like that's the reason why he has so much... M I don't want to say money, but he has command points. Like because I believe the model players can afford. Even though he is sitting on <laughs> 1000 command points with like multiple level 3 slaughterhouses. I mean, he has arches to protect this area. And no fire arrows. Um, no. Fire arrow you need to buy from the tavern too. And you need to get it to level 3 first. So. 700 for level 2 only. That's crazy. The worm. Okay. The level 3 Malon tree has been taken down. And can you imagine that? The Alvin player is only at 425 command points, boys. Only. Oh my. Holy quacamole. That's that's damage, dude. He went for the Alvin Wood in the in the mist. So he can debuff them. And he has also Alvin Wood for more resistances on his units. The stable has been taken down. The Corsair is coming in clutch to destroy another level 3 Malone 3. The Alvin player is dropping down to 300 command points only. The Mordor player is now committing fully. He's trying to get the power points he needs. He's 22 power points. He's 3 power points away from his 25, which will be the Balrog, the, the demon of the ancient world. And can he get there? The problem here for the Alvin player is, big time, that he's only at 250 command points. Boys, he has only one single Malone 3 up on the field. Can you imagine that? He has only one single Malon tree on the field. He has money, but he cannot recruit any more units. There's a squad. That's all he got. That's all he got. He has Hydra on the field and a couple of Lancers with uh, Arvin. That's, he cannot have more than that for a long time. He needs to invest all the money he got. He has now two slaughterhouses. One of them here, one of them here. But they are both level one. If he loses the builder, he's going to lose that. He's going to get the builder trapped. And his money is meaningless when you cannot use it. When you cannot... Do anything with it, you know? He's gonna have to be <laughs> recruit more builders. The model player once again went for the upgrade on the fortress to make it a bit more tanky. Now it's gonna be double as tanky as it was before, so it will take more than a flood to destroy this. I mean that was the last hope from the from the album player. What a comeback, dude. I don't know. This game isn't over yet. I don't know what's gonna happen, but this is looking good for Mordor now, all of a sudden. He went even for Mouth of Sauron. Finally, he has some money to invest into something else but Corsairs and Easterlings exclusively. He doesn't even make any more orcs at all. Like, I didn't see Orpid on the field since like 20 minutes. I'm pretty sure that Arvin can also one-shot Mouth of Sauron. I don't know if he's considered as like a Black, black Rider. But you can see, uh, similar in Rise of the Witch King, uh, the, the Elven faction have like a really rough time against campers. So you, even your ants can get blown away from the, you know, from the Rain of Fire, from the Worm, from the Fire Arrow Shooting Towers. And boys, now here's the Balrog. Okay, so I want to see this animation. You want to commit? Balrog cannot win you the game, but it can damage everything and destroy the only remaining barracks from the Alvin player. And you can even take down the heroes eventually. The Hydra is gonna cause problems the second he's level 10. Oh my, hold on. You see the pikemen crashing actually, Hydra. Barricade has been used. Look at the minimap. It's unbelievable, dude. It's really unbelievable. Yeah, again, question to you guys in the comments. Should we add this as the first game to the Hall of Game? And if you, if you believe or if you think that more games from Give Me 1 and 2 and Rise of the Witch on my channel already deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, you can go to this video and comment and then we can add them also. I want to make like a playlist, Give Me 1 Hall of Fame, Give Me 2 Hall of Fame and Rise of the Witch King Hall of Fame. Obviously not every single game can be Hall of Fame. Oh, he used flat here by the way, but again, doesn't really matter. Flat is on cooldown. Eagles are almost back up. Ants are Ants is almost back up. Badrock is available. Arrow Wally will be used to deal with the Corsairs. No problemo. He damaged the fortress a little bit. The Nazgul is coming too. Mouth of Sauron level 1. Rebuilding the towers and keeping units around just for the worst case scenario.
Boom. Run out of going. Fly, you fools. <laughs> Boom. Ah, you see, the damage is not very good against buildings. Against Fortress, I mean. Fortress is just too tanky. But the Breath Fire is going to deal damage. Like, the Breath Fire leaves fire on the ground. Uh, like, fire on the area. And the area will start burning. And then it will take damage over time, too. You know what I'm saying? He has Parash, too, very soon. And Rain of Fire, too. I think he got this. Like, I think... Hold on. He's... Look, you see, he's committing fully. Maybe he... Uh-oh. If he can take down the fortress, he's gonna use barrage here. Will this be enough to kill the ants? Oh my! No! No! He killed the fortress! Right before he could use the rain of fire. The ants, they didn't die to the barrage though. I mean, they got blown away, but they didn't die. If the fortress here can survive this. Hold on a second. Money-wise, it's looking much better for Mordor. But the true question is, who has a builder? That's a very important question. Like, money doesn't do anything if you have no builders. Oh, the last barracks whipped by Balrog and that's it. Mordor wanted... What? Guys, holy quacka moly. That was actually a phenomenal game, man. I really like this game. I didn't know what's, gonna, what's happening. Like, it, you saw in the last minute... The mortal player lost the fortress. He couldn't use power points anymore. And then there was only one barracks. I didn't even know that there's only one barracks remaining. And then the fortress has been taken down in the last second of Baldrog. Before he was leaving the Middle Earth, he whipped him. He whipped the barracks like he whipped in the films Gandalf. And that's it. Mordor officially is dominating Middle Earth. And the era of elves is over. The time of the orc has come. GG well played. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. And also, comment down below what was your most favorite moment of this game. I'm curious. I want to see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, stay beyond standards. Peace out.